what I wanted to accomplish. And as I said, the thing I'm now wanting to accomplish was um, helping the people like me, people who were stuck in this gray area because you know you you are blind or you're not. And you know, as you saw in the Nikki B video, you, you have limbs or you don't. And I was stuck in that area which was I was, but I really wasn't. And at the same time, he was confusing for not only for me, but for the people around me. Um, I did have a cane for about two years until my eyes kind of finally stabilized out, and that was a tough time. I, I still can't drive. I, you know, I need to use backfires and read and so on. But I wanted to take it a step further, and I've always wanted, I had the urge to help people. So while I was in my junior into senior year of high school, I had an idea of forming a charity. And this charity I dubbed at the time was Dreamscape Foundation. So I was in high school at the time. And I began it with art and I, I pushed it and I wanted to build an organization that helped people with rare disabilities and diseases. Because I knew at that time that I couldn't wait around for someday. And one thing I truly learned is you should, if you have a dream or if you have something <coughs> close to you, you should never give up on it, no matter what anyone tells you. And my dream was to help the organization and, uh, and grow and flourish and help others. Because you know we're all in this together, and it's not about you know, finishing first, it's about how many people could finish, help finish. So if you have something in mind and you want to achieve it, don't wait till someday, because that's that's what I was gonna do. That's I kind of was realized that if I waited around and hoped it worked out, someday would never happen. You know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that those are all on the calendar it's about four times a month. So someday. You know, uh, we're all told that life is tough, uh, life is hard, life is rough. But as you can see in you know the video and with my situation, it was it was hard. But the awful truth is, life is easy. It's easy to skate by and to do nothing. You know, it's when you wake up for school in the morning, is it easier to get up and get ready or just to go back to sleep? There's those situations where you have to make the correct choices and to push through what you want and to accomplish your goals. So, you know, truly living and chasing what you want to do, that's living, that's, that's hard. And when you figure that out, when you figure out what you want to do, then you should protect it and don't let anyone else discourage you no matter what. So, you got to take action and run with it. So today, you know, my the charity has grown pretty well. I've been running it officially for about a year and a half, you know, with the help of my family. And I've gotten a good amount of sponsorships and just continue to grow it. Uh, a couple of my uh, Google sponsors me. That was the first one I, I went to and the first one I got. And um, Amazon Smile sponsors me. So if you go on to like Amazon, they, let me check out with them, and I've also helped you know uh, quite a few amount of people. And one of the important things about the organization was when I started was I wanted to create that place where people can come and link up together. Because I didn't have that, I didn't have that opportunity in the beginning. Because when I was reaching out, um, there wasn't anyone to reach out to, and I figured out that I'm going to have to do this on my own. So that was really important to me. So I wanted people to come together and you know, fight for a cause. And this past November, um, a couple of events that we did, we had an event for a girl who had cancer, and uh, we were able to raise like $8,000 for her to go home for the holidays, and that was great. As well as a, uh, this past um, December, it was a little more local, and we helped like Flanders and Com, uh, Head Start programs and orphanages nearby. So, you always just got to help and push forward, and I definitely have to say that if this didn't happen to me, and if I did give up, and if I did take the advice of others, of, you know, you have to sit down and you know, 
take it easy for now and just stay by, I wouldn't really be where I am. These two most important things in your life are the day you're born and the day you figure out why. So today when you go home or even while you're sitting here, uh, figure out why, what you want to do and what you want to accomplish. And fun with it. I don't know if anyone had any questions for me while I'm here. Anything? That's my favorite color. It's a question in the back of the room. It's a question. Um, like, how can you see now? Um, it's kind of, I have no central vision. So, out of the center is gone. I have the peripheral, though. So when I'm using, like, computers or, like, adaptive technology, I have to, like, zoom in or um, blow images up to see them. Like, if I'm on my phone or something, I have to kind of look on an angle on the side of my eye. Um, in the beginning, I did have to use a cane because each day by day by day, my eyesight got worse. So, it finally got to a point where I kind of plateaued out, and I was able to get used to it. So once it plateaued, and once it reached that point where I was able to get used to something, it was almost like relearning how to see. It was relearning, um, you know, something that I lost. So I was just a new way of figuring out how to get by. Any other questions? Yeah. So has it reached its final stages, or? No, it's, it's always continuing. It's always continuing to grow. Um, right now, in the past couple of years, uh, we reached Verify nonprofit, and then now we're a 501c3 organization, and what that means is we're fully tax exempt. So we're, we have the same like jurisdiction as like an American Red Cross or a Make a Wish Foundation. So obviously, the goal is you know to keep growing, and to keep touching people, and expand from there. Right now, it's so within a small group of people of, you know, 20, 30,000 people and keeping it grow on social media. Mm -hmm. So the bigger the better. And so how would, like, say, if the confirmation class next year wanted to do something to help the foundation, what could we do to help the foundation? Well, that's a good question. I One of the things that I really wanted to focus on when I was first establishing the charity was to capture like talents and to grow all from there. Um, I was very talented in art, so I actually made a bunch of pieces and I went from that and that's how I first started raising money and funding the charity. And from there, a lot of other people reached out wanting to contribute their talents and wanting to help volunteer. I had you know, people say, oh, I'm, I'm good at playing music and I help, want to help make like a CD single or I want to help um, volunteer for an event and I just recently um, during the holidays we had like a, a video game stream and that went really well people raised here it's like two thousand dollars and it's really one thing again I wanted to point out was it's really community driven so the people that come together and say we want to raise for this cause I you know, I'm more than willing to help support it when it falls within the mission any other questions? We had a question on this side, or on the left side. Uh, when you kept losing your eyesight and it got like progressively worse, what did you think you were going to do for the rest of your life? Like, did you ever think like it was over with? Or? Um, I did have, I can't lie, I did have my dark days. I mean, like, mm -hmm. one thing that people would say, what did you miss the most? And, you know, waking up in the morning, people would be like, oh, did you miss driving? Did you miss reading? Did you miss just, you know, seeing the big picture? But, you know, I mean, I really did miss the little things, you know, just going outside and, you know, seeing the sky and the details of the grass. And, you know, I, I was raised with that for like 16 years and all of a sudden I just had someone you know, take it away from me. And the, uh, the thing I missed the most is definitely you know, the hardest thing, too, was just waking up every morning and kind of seeing myself in the mirror. And, you know, because I noticed progressively it was getting worse day by day by day by day. Um, and I did have, you know, my dark times in my place. But whenever you do have those dark situations and you need a problem to overcome, you, know, you definitely have to fall back on your faith and you definitely have to hold on to that because, you know, there is a reason for everything. And once you, you have to take something negative like that, or, you know, in, in Nikki V's video, he showed, you know, he didn't have arms and legs. And 
you can either he could have fell and have stayed on the floor, or he could have gotten back up. And you have to take something. That situation with me is I can either let the blindness control me, or I can control it. So when I didn't think it was all over, I just knew the way I lived had to change. There's a person in the back one. Do you know how to be Braille? Yes. I, the first, I didn't want to read Braille at first um, because they kind of told me that they wanted me to do it because they didn't know how long it would take me to lose my eyesight. So when I began reading Braille, it was almost to me as if they kind of talked me into it because I was really rebellious. That I said, you know, if I if I do this, then I'm like I'm giving up, and if I do this, then it's like I don't know what I'm doing. But he, uh, I did learn Braille, and it took me like two months to learn it all. And the uh, Braille is actually pretty simple. It's it's almost like a six-sided die, and the top left is A, one below it is B, and letters grow from there. Um, do I use it that much? Uh, absolutely not. I mean. Besides, like bathrooms and elevators, but even today, I, I'll just use let me with the first letter, like M W, and that's really it. Or, but uh, today, in today's world, it's not it's not the best option. I I, I found more comfort in um, different technologies. Find the one. Yeah. Um, when you lose a sense, doesn't like another sense become like stronger? Absolutely. Um, one of them. I would say the mo one in particular that one of the most is definitely my memory. And that's not typically a sense, but it's what I relied on the most. Um, yes, I noticed my hearing went up, my scent went up, everything increased greatly, but I really so heavily relied on my memory. And when I was losing my sight, since I was still getting used to it day by day by day, I would really have to rely on where I was going. So if I was leaving class in high school, I would say, okay, well, I'm leaving this classroom. I have to go 15 steps to the right and 15 steps to the left to go to social science and then kind of go from there. So I really relied on that and that really got my mind a lot sharper. So losing that sense kind of opens a lot of new doors to uh, different senses and ways to adapt. All right, well, that's all then. Thank you guys. And to learn more about the Dreamscape Foundation and to find out how you can start sharing the dream, please visit www.dreamscapefoundation.com.